All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, Bob Martin with rcsub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks. And uh, we're going to continue with this uh, OTW upholder build. And this chapter is going to focus on some of the more cosmetic uh, details of the hull. I'm going to be doing some uh, cutting, uh, setting in some of the, the surface details to more um, accurately depict the actual boat. Um, but to start out with, I wanted to get the uh, hull indexing looked after and we're going to take a look at what we've got to work with here right now and again this is an exceptionally high quality uh, hull it's just beautiful but what you can see is you know at the, at the back we've got a nice flush kind of seam going on right here uh, and at the front we've got a nice flush seam but unfortunately in the middle just because we've got such a long span uh, we just got a little bit of bowing and it's just like a sixteenth of an inch or maybe a little less, but what we want it to look like is something more like that. You know, nice and, and flush. And so, to that end, uh, you know, my thought is to put some, uh, I guess, pins, some orienting pins in place. And if you take a look on the lip here, I marked out several locations uh, with a black pen and uh, these are going to be teeth now the the challenge to this and I've been thinking about this um, is that they need to perfectly line up with the upper hull so there's going to be uh, you know a pin in the bottom and a hole in the top or, or vice versa depending on what my thought is at the time I'm installing it um, but if they don't line up perfectly um, you know we're going to have an issue so what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a template and this is aluminum L channel and the idea is uh, I'm just going to set this right on here line it up make sure that my hole uh, is in the right place and that'll give me perfect you know horizontal alignment now the only challenge is going to be you know this this linear longitudinal um, accuracy so uh, that's why it's just really important for me to mark out and what I've done is I've I've used scribe marks on the hull to help orient the pins because those match up perfectly with the upper hull so that's the plan uh, in theory gonna go for a nice clean seam and uh, we'll see if it works okay this is what we uh, ended up with we'll take a look at some of these individual pins here. Uh, these are brass, uh, solid brass rod and I, uh, I ground down the tip so that they're pointed and that'll help orient the uh, upper hull so that these slip into uh, you know their respective holes nice and easily. Um, what I did find is I was out by say like a millimeter or half a millimeter uh, in a lot of cases longitudinally um, which is not a big deal at all so all I did is I took my Dremel and uh, on the upper hull uh, I simply extended the holes uh, forward and back, not left and right, because we didn't want to, uh, you know, modify the uh, the spacing there, but forward and backward. So what we've ended up with here, I'm going to try and do this so you can see. It actually goes on quite well. just like that. So again compared to you know where we were looking previously you can see that you know this is a nice tight seam from uh, from front to back there so very happy with that um, you know next step we got to figure out a way to keep this thing down um, preliminary thoughts as of right now is to have a catch uh, in the front so we slip the hull on drop it down and then uh, have just one single thumb screw uh, in the back here. So to get into the hull, you simply remove that, uh, lift up, slide it forward, and have access to the hull. But we'll see how that works out. Okay, as you can see, I've got some more work done on the uh, hull. Big thing I want to point out with this is that uh, see a little bit of, um, I guess, some inaccuracies. Uh, with the kit as supplied or, or, or recommended as supplied, specifically for these um, windows in the in the side of the hull. Now, if you take a look at these templates that come with the model, 
um, you'll see that, um, at least in my opinion, they're uh, a little bit off size. And uh, the reason I think so is, is based on these reference photos that I've managed to collect, you can see that these windows are actually fairly large. So this is the, the rear one, for example. You can see it stretching all the way uh, from this break in the hull um, almost to the very top. Um, and, you know, whereas in this template shows it being, you know, fairly small, um, you know, it is actually a fairly large window. So I, I made those adjustments. I cut these out with a diamond cutting wheel uh, on the Dremel uh, and then put a piece of plastic in behind there. Um, heated it up with my heat gun, uh, formed it to the hull to get the right contour uh, in there. This is the uh, exhaust nozzle area. And at, again, as you can see, uh, on the model there, this is actually a, a fairly, you know, three-dimensional um, area, and you can see that on the sail there as well, where these anechoic tiles protrude from the hull. So I've been working on that, and the other thing is is this um, this demarcation line in here, where you can see the upper hull meets the lower hull in there, and, and what I used for that. Uh, I used a um, fiberglass cutoff wheel on my Dremel uh, and then ran that along and then once I had that in place I used a uh, piece of sandpaper on a spatula and basically just put that right in the line and sanded back and forth to get the, the lower hull fared in and a nice sharp line on the top and that just adds a little bit more visual interest uh, to the model so uh, the other thing I worked on is the sail uh, I got some all the openings cut into it and uh, you know again these three-dimensional representations for the conning tower uh, forward dome there and then in the uh, the back area so coming along uh, I got one side done here I'm going to move on to the other side and uh, and then from there we'll continue to add some more visual details okay I think this is going to be the last um, little chapter of this um, chapter of the build blog before I get to trimming and uh, you can see where I am at now now this is not paint this is just uh, a black automobile primer. Uh, you can see my window cutouts uh, in there and I've uh, actually uh, drilled in some little uh, fastener reproductions uh, around the perimeter of it to fall in line with the um, photos, the reference photos that I have. Uh, stainless steel mesh in behind these grates here and then you can see the um, you know the scribed in or the, or the cut in demarcation uh, for the hull here. Um, obviously installed you know some of the uh, you know sonar and other hull details and uh, this is the sail and actually these periscopes turned out uh, you know really good. I used my 3D printer to uh, draft these in 3D printed them out and then these are mounted to some brass tubing, some hollow brass tubing um, wanted to give them a little bit of height so that when you operate the boat at periscope depth, um, you know, you can still gauge where the model is. Um, I got a little scale guy here. He's uh, 48th scale, which is really close to 50th scale. Uh, so it gives you a good idea about how big, you know, a person or individual would be, you know, on this particular boat. Uh, this is the exhaust port area, and these are going to be represented by some aluminum tubing that's cut on an angle and those will be installed you know something like this uh, somewhat flush with the hull after it's all painted um, moving to the back here again primer on the hull but this is probably the biggest thing um, a single hold down screw and you can see that's a metric um, bolt but you can just use your fingers to loosen that off uh, and remove it and then having done that 
Um, the entire hull just picks up from the uh, rear, slides forward, and comes off. You've got a catch in the front there, fabricated from for some nice thick brass stock. So you can see it just catches the lip of the upper hull. So very simple, it just hooks in, drops down, and everything is ready to go. And then in the back you can see this bulkhead that was installed um, along with the, um, you know, the bolt recess in there. So really, you know, we are at the point where I am going to be moving on to trimming. Um, so look for that in the next chapter of this build blog. Uh, as always, thank you for joining me and we'll see you again soon.